Hello, my name is Kyle Moliney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And I'm Rachel Renner, also from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm also an anarchist. <laughs> and today we bring to you the news from Underground, this time covering the legalization stories you're hearing from, uh, I guess, the attempts to legalize it and many of the other tax firms, um, and of course, from Colorado. And so, what is the anarchist position on the issue? Um, you've heard everything from... Uh, Leave us alone! <laughs> always our position. That's always our position. <laughs> uh, we don't want anything to do with government. Right? We don't want anything to do with sociopaths who, who point some guns at people to solve their problems and to steal from you. Uh, people who violate consent, people who uh, violate property, uh, property rights, you know, uh, self-ownership. And that's essentially where the areas of uh, cannabis use or any other vices or drugs are mainly concerned with. Uh, the idea of government involving itself with that is for to acknowledge and legitimize the idea that strangers should have a say what you can and cannot put in your own body. That is to say that uh, you've allowed strangers, uh, sociopaths, to, to control you, to, to treat you like a slave. Um, you know, because the fact that you go out there to seek uh, crumbs for, you know, of freedom instead of seeking all of it, uh, I find that to be kind of problematic. Um, yeah, and an overwhelming um, tone of the legalized forms is, you know, like something that's sort of a cross between a bribe and a begging, you know, begging yeah. for crumbs. You know, like, government would make so much money if it would legalize it. Yeah, because government's doing such a great job with your money already, you know. Yeah. I mean, like, we'll give you money if we can smoke up. Oh, for, yeah. And the effects of legalization, with all the effects of legalization means that um, not that it'll just become also a culture drug like you see. You can't have fun at um, watching sport games like Super Bowl commercials will come out. Again, you know, uh, government backed sports stadiums will come out saying that, uh, you know, you can't have fun without drinking, smoking mm -hmm. cigarettes, and now cannabis. Um, so even for those who oppose. Yeah. <laughs> and pay your licenses. Absolutely. All of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to become a uh, regulated license. Uh, it's going to become another prohibition area drug, just like um, alcohol use. Uh, that still is, uh, we're still under prohibition, especially here in the tax form of Virginia. Uh, so it hasn't really gone away. It's just become hidden through a lot of legal paperwork. It's become an elaborate system of bribery. Yeah. Prohibition light. Uh, look at the uh, continued increases on taxes on uh, cigarettes, for example, on tobacco. Um, those always continue to go up, especially in New York City. You know, people have to go to uh, North Carolina to kind of buy cheaper ones and kind of smuggle them to, into that city and sell them for cheap. Uh, so taxes continue to go up. You know, so you're just kind of trading uh, one form of violence for, for another. You know, uh, not being thrown into a rape cage, but still having your property stolen from you. Uh, still begging these, uh, at least some kind of relief from from your political rulers mm -hmm. who don't give a shit about you. Obviously, if they did, they would grant you the respect that you own your own body, and they should have no say to that. Um, and the persecution isn't based on, you know, personal behavior and thereby personal responsibility. It's based on the, you know, agreed upon level that all adults can have present in their system. You know, whether you're Andre the Giant or, you know, um, somebody who's four foot nothing. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> you're still seeking solutions from the sociopaths that made it illegal to begin with. Um, you know, the effects of decriminalization have another interesting effect, although it's, uh, they've done this in Portugal. Uh, over a decade now, in which all the drug user rates went down dramatically, um, and no escalation of, of I guess, uh, social violent issues uh, arisen from that. But at the same time, it makes the production of that product still criminal, still illegal, uh, still with threats of uh, extortion and, and, and um, engagement, uh, being thrown into another government rape cage. So, of course, the user uh, of cannabis can, is, is still permitted, but the production of that product of, of your own private property and to trade that freely and voluntarily with other people consensually is still criminal and illegal. So there's still no win-win situation. And even if you know, make it illegal or illegalize it or decriminalize it, um, in every term of sort of uh, the relationship you have with government, it's always still a win-lose relationship. Um, nobody wins when government gets involved. Nobody wins when there's a gun pointed at everyone and forces them to do that, which the, I guess the majority dictates or what government dictates. And all under the guise of keeping us safe, you know, I mean, if marijuana was to be legalized, I'm almost certain there would be some form of age restriction, which would once again lead to the whole, you know, conundrum of, oh crap, I'm having a bad reaction to this substance, which given it's, you know, forbidden nature I wasn't really that educated about and now I can't go to the hospital because I'll get thrown in prison after I nearly die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean legalization also has a lot of problems uh, arisen even with uh, making it illegal it's difficult even to find work um, you know we're not against uh, personal use of it or or you know I, I'm an advocate of it but I'm not an advocate of government involvement in deciding that on my behalf 
uh, telling me what I can and cannot do with my own body. And the home testing kits for um, purity are there. I mean, even for drugs of different schedules and with different properties, you know, um, ecstasy testing kits and what have you. And, you know, of course, marijuana is very hardy and easy to grow by yourself. So you can know precisely where that weed is coming from and that you did not spray it with roach spray or whatever. Yeah, and, and like how on. alcohol used to be before prohibition. Um, you know, when you had labels, you had uh, attachments to businesses, you can uh, sue them liably if there was any kind of injury or harm. Um, you know, you can trace it back instead of making it as, a, I guess, the way how it's anonymous and difficult for there to be, uh, I guess, to find restitution because it's illegal. Uh, it's difficult to find dispute when the alternative would be, you know, if it was known, you know, here's a cage for you. Um, so that's why there's a lot of violence when in, in terms of the war on drugs um, because you can't find uh, arbitration, uh, I guess, in that, that kind of particular market when it's uh, outlawed by the state. Um, so you'll find, I guess, what, I guess, the alternative of all this would be, you know, let the communities that you yourself live in, let that, you know, you go to an apartment complex and they say no dogs allowed, cats are okay, or vice versa, or, you know, no smoking in, uh, in on this property. Let the people who own the private property dictate the rules in terms of uh, what particular, I guess, uh, products are used. Um, and unfortunately here in Virginia, they made it legal to, to smoke, for example, in a lot of the restaurants. Like, look, people look at restaurants differently than they do their own homes. It's still private property, still belongs to someone else. Um, and the rules that dictate, uh, the individual who owns that property dictates it, or is very important. Um, restaurants just means it's an open invitation for you to walk in, right? Mm -hmm. And plenty of restaurants were following logical courses already as far as the separation of smoking or the encouraging of smoking in an enclosed tobacco bar environment. So, you know, you're not out on the streets littering your butts everywhere. No. You know. uh, and pot, I mean, Lord, it's the colossal Hollywood joke that, you know, pot is still, you know, criminalized. That, uh, you know, everybody knows the general behavior of a pothead. You know, there have been so many movies, you know, I mean, post, you know, the serious take on Reefer Madness, which was very quickly turned into a snuff film. Nobody ever took it seriously for any huge length of time. And the parodies of it have been just a remarkable, you know, pro-pot lobby, particularly the musical. God, I love the musical. <laughs> yeah, um, pot is just... Um, Humanity is able to handle themselves because they have a huge amount of awareness of, you know, how you have to be responsible with it, what sort of behavior to expect from it, you know. Um, just recently on Jezebel, there was a huge feed uh, about um, people's worst drug-related reactions. And in none of those did anybody really commit a violent crime, so. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never heard uh, anyone dying from, from cannabis. Um, I've seen the funny memes that come out. It's like, this is what you look like after two hits, and they look like a meth user. But uh, <laughs> um, again, That's outdated. That's yeah. outdated. But, but it's, just, it's, it's now, yeah, and I'm, I'm glad the, I guess, society at large, and it's taken such a long time when if you sort of just um, acknowledge property rights of self-ownership, it wouldn't have come to that. Um, but remember, if trying to achieve change to government, you know, it does take a long time, um, whereas it, it shouldn't be such the case. You know, 75 years, you know, people advocate for legalization, 75 years is not a measure of success to finally gain one scrap of your freedom, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time. Not a measure of success. So, you know, cheering and uh, parading and saying, you know, finally we have this freedom to do it. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ, that took forever. Um, and you're still losing freedoms <laughs> through Patriot Act, through the National Defense Act. Every law is a gun pointed at your head. Um, you know, so you, that's not uh, a step forward. That's not uh, progress. You know, sorry, it's a regress. It uh, you know, holds everyone back. Um, and I would say then that the activism then shouldn't be well, let's legalize a, a plant. It should be let's end the state and allow these communities to have voluntary, consensual relationships with with, um, with the rules and laws that they themselves choose. Right? Um, you never chose yourself for cannabis to be made illegal. You know, some sort of you had an opportunity, a choice that you lived in a community to consent to those rules, like you do when you move to an apartment complex or people who move to golf course communities. You know, you look at the rules. You know, it's like, all right, I I, I like this. I agree to the consequences. I'm signing my name to this polycentric legal system, um, and that's what it would be like, right? And you'll have a lot of competing communities with a lot of different rules, and that's catering to your lifestyle and preferences instead of one overarching uh, community body organization called government saying, fuck it, you know, it mob rules over everyone. Um, and it takes forever to pr progress to that. Uh, it slows not everything just the down. users of pot are, you know, people easy to get along with by reputation and by personal experience. But pot itself, you know, has a huge growing zone and it's, it's resistant to pests and oddly enough, a very similar way that tobacco is resistant to pests. The same, you know, substance that we crave is the exact same thing that keeps some animals away. Though 
deers are a problem, but they're a problem in vegetable gardens too. And Lord knows, you know, if you need a reason to court the people who could actually benefit from this, you know, who are going to take the effort, farmers. Um, yeah. Presently, we know that weed is very compatible to grow with corn <laughs> because that's usually its cover. So, yeah, I mean, farms are struggling right now. Um, you know, they have to rely heavily on government subsidies. You know, they're slowly being taken over by, you know, contract bound companies. If pot becomes legalized instead of decriminalized, how long until there's, you know, a, a Monsanto wanna, you know, a one specific clone-esque strain that's just setting us up for failure you know i mean it's yeah and in the same way pattern trolling companies exist you have a lot of problems with these plants too you know that's kind of foreseeable you'll also have uh atf will add an extra letter to the acronym um so you know these things things will just continue to increase in promise as a distraction to this to, to the solution of ending government ending um uh, sociopathic control over your bodies you own your own body Right? No one else owns your body. So it's an absurd notion even to beg again uh, for, for scraps of, of freedom that already belong to you from, from strangers. Right? It, it, it legitimizes, it acknowledges the notion, um, it uh, makes, makes you act like a slave uh, that they want you to act like, to, to behave like. Um, Can I make my joke? Yes. Okay. My joke was um, that if the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms added um, cannabis C to its symbol, you could switch the acronym around to be FACT. And we can't let that out. <laughs> Because you know they do it, you know, yeah. just Operation Iraqi Liberation style. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you really do care about freedom and care about the, the future of the, this uh, the society that we live in and care about uh, ending uh, the war on drugs. Don't just, you know, stop right there, you know, and the cause of this whole problem to begin with, and that's government. You know, spend your, your time, your energy, your commitment towards that instead for a society based on consent and self-ownership. Um, so with that, I'm Kamala Lane signing off. I'm Rachel Renner. Talk so you guys take the victory party. Take good care. Yeah.